Hello, in this video I thought it would be cool to show what the cameras can do in Wicked Engine specifically how to render the camera feed with cameras so I'm in the sponsor scene and let's put a ca new camera into the uh, scene now when you put, that, put it down it will place this kind of object which shows where the camera is located and where it's looking at and uh, what is the up direction of it and uh, when it is selected open the camera window and in the editor you will see the camera preview and it says editor only and that means that this camera preview is only generated inside the editor and it is a full um, full complete rendering of the scene from the camera perspective so if you grab and move the camera then of course you will see the camera preview update in real time but uh, normally you would not use this kind of preview when you want to have the camera feed displayed on something in the scene because this has post-processing like tone mapping applied to it and you wouldn't want to apply that twice because the screen rendering also has tone mapping so if you want to apply this on something then enable render the texture for the camera it will switch to an, an untone mapped a raw render camera preview which uh, uses different kind of uh, simplified rendering this allows it to be used in, in real games in, in real time and with good performance the raw render of the camera preview it has slightly different colors displayed here kind of harsher colors because this doesn't have the same tone mapping applied but this means that it can be applied onto objects or materials and lights this way better so if you want to do that let's say that uh, I want to put a cube in this scene and I want the camera feed to be displayed on the cube as its texture select the cube uh, material and open it uh, open the material settings and uh, then you can find the camera source combo box and uh, select your camera that you placed earlier and uh, immediately the camera feed becomes visible on the cube because the camera is also looking at the cube which has the texture you can see the the texture update on in real time on the cube and the cube itself is visible within the cube texture or if you grab the camera then you will also see that the camera texture updates real time and uh, placed onto the cube now if you bring it into the shadow it's barely visible right now but you can increase the emissive of the cube and then the camera feed texture that's put onto the cube it's not only used for the base color but it's also used for emissive texture so it will just work out nicely and uh, you can increase the brightness uh, very easily with this uh, emissive trick you could also change the shader type of the cube to uh, unlit so that the shadows uh, don't affect it well in this case you won't be able to tweak the emissive because it's just a really simple texture shader this way you can see lighting or shadow doesn't affect the cube this is a pretty useful trick to <coughs> for example have a tv screen object in your scene the screen is a separate material that you put um, the camera feed you you kind of mesh the camera feed with the material of the tv screen which i will also um, show a bit later because I have a preset scene for that and uh, one other thing is with the camera feed texture you can uh, select the camera and of course you can uh, adjust the rendering width and height of the camera F by default it uh, has a pretty low render resolution to kind of have a good balance between performance 
and, uh, and visual quality. You can also make it uh, use multi sampling. That uh, can be mostly visible if you reduce the resolution. For example, 64 by 64 is pretty low. And you can see the pixelation of the camera rendering. If you enable multi sampling with the increasing the sample count, then the picture gets a bit smoother. And you can also enable the CRT effect. Uh, well, and this low resolution it uh, looks very bad. So let's increase that to 256 by 256. So the camera feed will now display a CRT post-processed image. That's also could be useful if you want to have a CRT TV in your screen uh, in your scene and have some sort of a more interesting effect applied to it than just a raw camera texture. You can not only apply this uh, camera feed texture onto an object, but also for a light, uh, specifically for a spotlight. Uh, for point light, it, this one won't work because point light has to cast in uh, all the directions. But for a spotlight, this uh, can be easily set up. Let's add the new <coughs> uh, spotlight to the scene, like this. Here it will be good. Uh, let's open the light settings and just like with the material, you can set the camera source of the light. Set it to the camera and then it will immediately display the camera feed in the light. Uh, let's disable the CRT effect right now, so that it becomes better visible. And you can also see that it is it gets properly projected onto the scene, just as you would expect with a spotlight. With spotlight you can increase intensity of the light to increase the brightness of the camera picture and all the other spotlight properties like cone angle and volumetrics will also work. The volumetrics is perhaps uh, pretty interesting because, uh, well, let's turn on the volumetrics for it. Uh, since there is no fog in the scene, the volumetric is not visible immediately, but uh, you can increase the volumetric boost for just the light with this slider. And then you will see the volumetric effect and this is not a, a simple volumetric effect because the volumetric fog of the light is also now tinted by the camera feed texture. If you move the camera about to change the render of it then you can also see the volumetrics update nicely and, and also the, the lighting itself update nicely. Apart from the volumetric lights, you can also add uh, this camera feed to a transparent object and the let the line shine through it. That's also one way that you can have tinted colored shadow, uh, tinted colored lighting with using the colored shadow map technique. For that, I will add the new. Um, by the way, you can also apply this to rectangle light, but for now let's add the new plane object here. I will turn on off the volumetric lighting and I will, uh, no, I will keep the volumetric lighting. I will turn off the camera feed for the light by selecting invalid entity for it. So. Now you see that the light is uh, not tinted by the camera feed, but instead it uh, also enables shadow casting for the light. So it's now a white light without the camera feed texture and the plane that I just said it can occlude the light by using the shadow map. Now that the plane is selected, in its material I 
I will use the camera feed for the planes material. And you can see the camera texture appear on the plane. But uh, what I want to do now is also increase the transmission of the plane so it becomes more transparent and uh, multiplies the light source passing uh, the light passing through it and with this you can also achieve a transparent lighting and a transparent volumetric lighting the result will be slightly different than what you would get by just applying the camera feed to the texture with this you get to control this uh, in a different way, in a, in a more physically physically based way, because uh, now the projection is controlled by how far the the object is located from the light and and things like that. So you can have part part trans, uh, part color colored lighting and part uncolored lighting by just dragging the object around. This kind of effect can not only be achieved by a camera feed texture, but if you select the light or, or the object, you can also apply video textures onto it by uh, creating a video component on, on the thing that uh, you want to put it on. But uh, that's going to be for another video. And uh, I, I've already created some sample videos uh, on the channel for that, that you can check out. So let's check this out uh, on kind of a gameplay demo with uh, uh, with, F, with a reconfigured scene that has these kind of video textures applied onto TV screens and projection screens. So in the character controller test, uh, I've configured it and replaced the level that I will load to the camera test level. Let's start this. And this is the test level. Yeah, I showcased this earlier, but <clears throat> this uh, has all the things that I just mentioned set up in kind of a gameplay demo level scene. Here is a camera feed projection. This uh, camera feed is from this camera. And the, I use the transparent uh, plane blocker to, to have this colored light effect with volumetric lights and projecting to projecting the image onto a, onto a white screen. This camera feed is not only applied to this, uh, to this light, but uh, also to these TVs here. As you can see, there are a lot of TVs, one camera feed on uh, all of them. And uh, there is also another camera here. Now here you can see kind of a picture-in-picture picture, um, effect because the camera is pointing onto the TVs and the TVs are also showing what the camera is uh, recording and then a kind of recursive TV screen effect will appear and on a, this, these TVs shown from a different camera angle also capture some of these TVs so pretty cool effect can be done with this and this is the third camera in this scene and this specifically shows the recursive effect um, of the camera feed now here in this scene the cameras are also parented to these camera meshes so I can also knock them over and you can see here that since the camera is attached to the to the physics object, it uh, pretty realistically behaves uh, to uh, to my gameplay. Not only the camera objects can be knocked over, but the TVs it's themselves, or the TVs and the cameras. So 
So I think with this you can have a pretty interesting uh, level setup and uh, I think it, it's pretty easy to use. But uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments and stay tuned for the next videos.